1915. My father was at the University of Wisconsin then. And then we moved to Montana, where he was a chancellor of the uh, state universities out there. And we lived in Helena from then until we moved to Lafayette in 1922, when he came to Purdue, and that's when I came to Lafayette, and uh, so my early days, earliest days were in Montana, and then Lafayette, kind of Indiana has been hometown for me, so. How old were you when uh, your father when you came here? Seven. Seven years old, okay. Do you have um, brothers, any siblings? Brothers? Yeah, I was the youngest of four. My oldest brother, John, went to Harvard. Actually, went to Dartmouth, then Harvard. And then my sister, Suzanne, went to Vassar. And my sister, Marion, uh, went to Wellesley. And I went to Purdue. Went, and I did, went to Highland, Highland School. And Jefferson High School in Purdue. Tell us a little bit about your recall when you were in, in, um, in high school. Were there any particular clubs or activities that you were involved in? Is that Jeff High School here? In yeah. Okay. Well, athletics. Mm -hmm. At Highland, was the Highland School? Is that, uh, no, Highland's a grade school. Is, is that still around, though? Yeah. Oh, it is. Now, it was a new school when I went there. Uh, I first went to school. My first school was in Vocational, which was right downtown Lafayette, and uh, then they moved, they built the Highland School, and that's where I went. It's, you know where that is? You tell, tell me where it's located. Well, it's, it's just north of the, uh, oh, you know where Owen Street is, and it's right, I mean, close to north, Owen and North, 4th Street north, uh, east of that, and uh, I'm trying to think of the first school I went to was right downtown, it was a, they call it a vocational school, and it was, I don't know. Was that the early, your early grade? That was, I was there for about one grade there, and uh, then went to Highland, and then went to Jeff, and and Purdue, and what you you said you were five when you came came here from Montana. Uh, well, how old were you when your father when you came here? You were I, I thought I was seven. Seven. Okay. So then, and you stopped. And so that. Okay. Nineteen twenty-two. I was born nineteen fifteen okay. in Madison. Then we moved to Montana, and then. I grew up really in Lafayette, and... That uh, school that you talked about that was originally downtown, you, you call the general area that it was located in? It's still there. Oh, is it? It's at the corner of... I think it's still there, 4th and... I'm getting mixed up myself here, but... I think it's still down there. But I'm not even sure of that now at the moment. When you were getting when you were getting ready to graduate from high school, had you thought of any other schools, or did you sort of think that Purdue was where you wanted to go? Since you're, I noticed your other your siblings went to other schools. Well, basketball was my big deal then, and I wanted to see if I could make the Purdue team, and I did. And in spite of me, we won three Big Ten championships. Tell us a little bit about that. Did you play basketball in yeah. school as well? Yeah. And grade school, Highland School, and then Jeff High School, and then Purdue. And uh, as I say, in spite of me, we won the Big Ten every year. Who was the, who, do you remember who was the... Uh, John Wooden was my hero. He, he graduated the year I entered, so I didn't play with John. I just, Dutch Faring was... I don't know whether you know that name or not, but F-E-H-R-I-N-G. He was captain of the team in my junior year. And we didn't play freshmen, didn't play in those early years. Only what, sophomores, juniors? Yeah, during those early years, that's the way it was. But anyway, I ended up being in Purdue when they were doing very well. Piggy Lambert was the name of the coach. And Did you play in the 
house part of the time, but I was basically at home most of the time. And you know where the Fidel house is? It's right across the street from the library. It's still there, the same fraternity house. Is that the one on the, uh, which, which one across from the, uh, one across from Grissom Hall, or? Yeah, it's a big white pillars, and you can't miss it. of one particular guy from Michigan, Chase Osborne.
she's a remarkable person. And, you know, I think Dad it was great to get someone like that. And to me here, I think that was a, a, a very positive thing for the university. And they came about the same time, the yeah. same year. Yeah. I don't know the same year, but the same period of years. Do you recall um, Dorothy Stratton? You, Dorothy Stratton, who was the dean? Yeah, I you know knew her. And I don't know why I'm feeling so blanky in my head about memories, but I guess when you get in your 90s, you get a little froggy up there. should be. I should remember, but I don't. I, I don't really have a lot of. Con- 
comments on it because I don't think of the changes. I don't know why. They just came and I don't remember just exactly when each of them happened. Some of the troops from the Navy and B-12s and groups like that were in camp. But the Hall of Music was a major, major building at that time. They named it for Dad. Was that the day? engineering product, you might say. Okay. What, what, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, a little more about it? I'm not that familiar with them. What, what, what uh, application would this be? Well, we would make cylinders. You know what our cylinders are for gases, or you breathing cylinders, and mm -hmm. you blow up your tires with air receiver tanks with pressure vessels, or, and we made those type of things. Ingersoll Rand was a big producer of, of that type of thing. And, and then, did you stay there for a while? And well, I was, yeah, I was with Press Steel Tank Company. After I left General Electric, I stayed with Press Steel until I retired. And you lived, did you live in the, what, what was it, in Milwaukee or? Uh, in New York. headquarters were, I worked in the New York office, the headquarters were in Milwaukee, it was a Milwaukee company. That's really my major company I work for. I should get, should get my biography out from someplace else because I get, so I can't even remember it myself anymore. <laughs> I know you've been pretty involved in the Alumni Association. Um, um, are you kind of automatically, you know. Oh, yes, I know. But I mean, do you have any, any offices particularly in the, in the Alumni Association? Or in a regional, were you um, with the Alumni Well, I was president of the club in Chicago and New York and probably in Florida. I've kind of forgotten now, but I got involved wherever Purdue was. And I noticed that, I uh, recall that for your 50th reunion, you were the chairperson for the, for the 1986, the chairperson of the 50 year class reunion. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of, those 50 reunions are kind of, it takes a lot of arranging and things of that sort to get those things together. Well, it just kind of came automatically. I don't remember specifically. It's, but, you know, I've just been active from beginning one, everything involving Purdue, and I've always had season tickets to football and basketball and stuff like that. It just came to them, traveled back to them. One thing I, uh, I think so. Sally? Maybe it'd be good if she came. Sally? 
Did any of your children go to Purdue? Yes. Uh, why isn't this awful? Scott. Your my, I have a stepson, Scott Patton. Uh, went to Purdue. And let me... God, I should... Who else did I have? Well, I think that's all. Ord went to Purdue. Your son, Ord. Well, he went to Princeton first. He went to Purdue to get his Ph.D. Yeah, but he went to Princeton undergraduate with yeah. his son, Ord. And he, he has a granddaughter. He has a grand... I think his... <laughs> his, the his, his granddaughter is getting her Ph.D. right now here. Oh, well, Lauren. Off. You don't mind, do you? A <laughs> <laughs> um, couple of other things. We were talking about the Alumni Association. He's a life member, and he mentioned about the class reunion and everything. Um, do you have any, any uh, particular hobbies or special interests or things that you'd like to share with us? Well, I guess golf is one of my special interests and pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> interested in sports and, you know, basketball yeah. particularly. Yeah. He's a member of the President's Council and a member of the, uh, he's a Buchanan Club member for the seating and member of the, uh, let's see, <laughs> what's the, he's not a, He's not a goal. He's a well, the top level of the John Purdue Club. I don't know what it's called. Okay. <laughs> um, can you tell us what would you uh, any big moment or uh, moment that you recall in your life that you'd like to share with us? Something that kind of sticks in your mind. You probably have a lot to choose from. Sally. <laughs> this is kind of an archive thing, but I noticed a couple of years ago, you recall giving a talk at the Birchville School about the piece of, of stone that had been in the old Fowler Hall, and they found it in the uh, drainage ditch, and you have, they have discovered and they took it over to Birchville School, and I guess you would talk to the students about it. Uh, when, they, when Fowler was torn down, a lot of the pieces were sort of found in drainage ditch, and uh, the school was sort of interested in it, and so they put it over there. And I re recall reading that you had given a talk to some of the students over there about it. About Fowler Hall? I mean, you know, about may have... this piece of stone that, that they found. Well, I've forgotten that, to be honest. But it sort of was, an, it was an, an interesting thing, and uh, <laughs> I know the children made a comment that uh, the teacher had said, it's good to learn, you'd learn a lot of things from the past, and you would share that with them. Well, isn't that amazing? I can't remember that story. Well, a couple of highlights for Ed. The past year, he he was honored by the uh, uh, Alumni Association as a outstanding alum, outstanding al a director of an alumni club. He was the first recipient of that award. And then at the Mollenkopf, I don't know if he's talked to you about the Mollenkopf yet or not, but he started that golf tournament in Florida. And... And this past year, uh, President Jiski awarded him the Griffin, which is the highest award you can get from Purdue. He got the Griffin Award. He has a little pin and a big plaque. And, uh, uh, about the Mollenkopf, I am interested. We would be interested in that. Um, how did you, that come about? How did it get started? <laughs> started a long time ago? Yes, and I'm... 30, 30, I think this is the 30th year for it. Oh. I think you started that one time you had uh, Bob Greasy and Mike Phipps and... We used to have an annual dinner down in Florida. For, you still do have it. Yeah, that's where we got it started, though, really. But it started... Started here at Purdue? No, it oh. started in Florida, but he had a group of former athletes come to play.
play golf with Jack Mollenkopf. Down in Florida. Down in Florida, and that's how it got started. She just wants you to take it for sure. So that so this is the thirtieth anniversary. And then well, do they still is it still held just in Florida then? Oh, not anywhere else. I see. Well this particular tournament we just oh. have that's an annual event. We'll always probably be there. I've forgotten where it's gonna be this year. Well it's always at uh, a golf course there called uh, Quail West, which is a bit west of Naples. It's really almost directly across from Bonita Beach. It's a little bit north of Naples, but south of Fort Myers, and it's on just right off the interstate, right off of 75, you know. A lot of people come from the north to play in this thing. It's got a lot of... It's usually held, it's usually held in February, the maybe second weekend in February used to be in January, but they changed it uh, because the football staff was always busy until the end of that one period they have of recruiting. Okay. A couple things. Um, is there any questions that, that I, that you, or something that you want to add to um, what we've been talking about is the time when he was at Purdue and we're trying to, because our oral history program has to do with uh, building up our, our history and things, and he shared some of the memories, and so I sort of uh, asked you an open-ended question, if there's something that I didn't ask that you'd like to share with us. Well, I probably, I, I don't know, I'm so, so foggy, I can't did, see anything. Did he talk with you about his experience playing basketball at Purdue? Yes, he did. We did cover that, and he joined also at Jeff, and then um, and I talked a little bit about the ROTC. And we talked about the tournaments, but they're a lot different. Now I didn't realize that he said the Big Ten that they played in. Uh, John Wooden was here when he was here. Well, John Wooden graduated the year I entered, so he then he had he'd already graduated. graduated my freshman year, but he's, he's been my hero. And Ed played on three Big Ten championship teams, he says in spite of himself. Yeah. Well, freshmen didn't play in those days, so you couldn't play in four. Yes, you were mentioning. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yes, and he covered that. Um, is there anything else that you could think about when you were here or changes in campus? Or you've been coming back and forth. This is your home, really, isn't it? You said he came in 1922. Right. So he told us a little bit about the house. Did, did you talk that. to them about your experience with Amelia? Well, I, we talked about her and had a pleasure of knowing her and getting to know her pretty well and I remember driving her over to Champaign on a special trip one time and shared a lot of things with her and you know she just was a remarkable person for Purdue and who else uh, Lillian Gilbreth Lillian Gilbreth also and her her son, Bill, was in school with me, oh. Bill Gilbert. Okay. Okay. I was just going to ask you, did people ever treat you differently on campus because your father was the president? Did, it, did the fellow students ever treat you differently? Or? Uh, I didn't think so. I mean, I didn't think about it, I don't think, because didn't, I don't think it affected my uh, relationships with other people. And, you know, I had kind of a normal time, I think, and I had a, I had a happy time at Purdue. And Did you talk to them about the Fidel's? Well, it was an important part of my life, and still is, really. Do you still drop in? Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. Sally's one of the favorites. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the opportunity to Richard, who's the director now, he, he's a, the 
celebration over there, but everyone that went said, what a difference, you know. It's, the house is in pretty good shape, and the boys seemed fine. And they probably still do their share of drinking over there, even though it's against the rules, but most of them do. But I don't think it's as blatant and as bad as it. They were, you know, it wasn't just the Fidels, everybody had that problem a few years ago. I think they've gotten a little more responsible, and they take their parties out of the houses now. They go somewhere and rent a place. Question. Um, when you were, how has the village changed? I'm interested in what it was like when you were here in school. Were there as many stores, or what was it like, do you recall? Well, there were obviously more, but it's still very much the same, Is it? I think. Harry's Chocolate Shop was was there, <laughs> still there. Yep. Did you walk back and forth to campus? No, I drove. Oh. I mean, I, I lived at home most of the time. I was at the house part of the fraternity house, but I, I basically commuted from home. And, you know, you... They had a trolley, didn't they? They have a trolley to come stay Yeah, but I didn't. I, didn't, I, didn't, I think his dad walked to work a lot. Yeah, dad, my father walked. walked. <laughs> Good bit of the time. Well, I know there are some other people that uh, live in Lafayette and walk, you know, uh -huh. you know, which is good. You know. uh -huh. The uh, Story, have you noticed any change over time, or you were alluding to before? Uh, it seems yeah. like most of the houses are still where they were. My father was a Phi from Nebraska, where he had been a, was in college. And uh, I don't know. Were most of the um, social activities, were they been held in the Union, the dances and things of that sort? Or were they also in fraternities and sororities? Would there be? Well, I did social? both. But both? You, but I would say, it seems to me we used to have something once a week. At Union building. I've kind of forgotten now, but they have a mil did they have a military ball? Yeah, that was a big deal, major deal. And that was probably in the union. Yeah, that was so. union building. And they used to have proms. They don't do that anymore. But they, they don't. No, they have house dances. You know, the fraternities and sororities have house a, an annual house dance every year. I think a big. They don't have a junior prom anymore. I don't think so. It, do they? I mean, I don't I think they do. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I just think it wasn't, you know, wasn't well attended. Even when I was teaching in the 50s, didn't seem uh, that. I've forgotten. I think they still had the prom, but I don't think it was well attended at that time. Yeah. That was a big deal when I was in school. Sure. Prom school, oh, sure. Yeah. It isn't anymore, huh? <laughs> I don't think they have. I'm glad you got home, honey. <laughs> changes and it's amazing how it has not changed in so many ways. Uh, in, in, in what ways has it not changed? Comment on that? Uh, well, I think we still have a uh, good student relationship with faculty and athletics and uh, I think Purdue's done a good job in handling their athletic program. We've had some lucky to have the people we've had. Uh, Sally may have some comments. I just thinking. Well, I work for the athletic department, <laughs> you know, so I 
think they did, did a, you know, they've handled things very well, particularly since women came on the scene. They didn't have 18 sports, you know, they tried to start small with eight, and it's gradually, uh, I think it's a good, pro I think they have a good program. I think both the men and the women have, you know, pretty good records in most of the sports now. And of course, their, their goal is to be in the top 25. University's goal to be in the top 10 academically, I know, but. And they're working on it. Uh -huh. 25 is probably more uh, reasonable for athletics because there's an awful lot of competition out there. Athletic-wise. Well, years ago, there, uh, there were sports, for swimming, there weren't as many sports, but there were both for male and female. But now they, uh, there was a lot more sports intercollegiate than there were maybe the time that you were. There weren't any intercollegiate sports any. for women until 1970. Two, five, 1975 is when we started women's intercollegiate athletics. Now there were intramurals, intramural program. And uh, I worked for six years at the recreational gymnasium, and we had an extensive intramural program. We had extramural clubs, with, and they participated with other schools sometimes, but it wasn't on the level. There were no scholarships given or anything of that nature. And those clubs, were the nucleus that formed the uh, emerging sports, I guess, like soccer. You know, there was a soccer club, and there were... The club sports. The club sports became varsity sports. Uh, they've sort of uh, developed into varsity sports. And, of course, the, the, the women's basketball intramural team or extramural team became the nucleus for the first women's basketball team and volleyball and those things. When did that start? In uh, 1975 was when athletics, they first started having women's athletics, but there was a strong intramural program before that time. And for, for basketball, then they had to, they had, you played in the state and then they had the tournaments when you were, what position did you play in, in your basketball? Believe it or not, center. I wasn't very tall. Well, you were 6'4", weren't you? Three. Three. But, you know, I, I was not tall. They're, they're like almost seven feet now, <laughs> a lot of the centers. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to share with us? or? You think well, I'll probably think of a lot after you leave. I've just <laughs> kind of seen it have been in a blank ever since you've no, been I here. I have very well. Have you interviewed anyone about women's athletics? Um, we forgot the PCD, and more important person in Purdue during that era. Well, you, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to mention that the first, the first honorary degrees were given in 1926, and he was one of them along with McCutcheon and George A. and Robertson. Oh. Do, you, do you recall that particular, your father did? Osborne, is he still around? Or? Oh no, he's long gone, but he was, he was the governor of 
and he has a good friend, Jack Leslie, who is the governor's son, you know, the son of governor. Oh, Jack would be a good Jack would be a good person for you to speak to. Indianapolis. 